Hey, good morning, everybody. We are continuing in the book of Ruth in the Old Testament. This is a great story. We're in chapter three. Now, let me give you a quick plot summary so far. Um, this all took place about 1100 BC, the time of the judges. And this is before uh, Israel had kings, before Saul and David and Solomon were kings. And Elimelech and Naomi and their two sons were from the tribe of Judah, and they migrate to Moab because there was a severe famine in uh, Bethlehem in, in, in their hometown. And while they are in Moab, uh, the two sons marry Moabite women, and Ruth is one of the women. And unfortunately, tragedy hits the whole of the family, and all the men die. And so we have three uh, uh uh, three widows in living in Moab. So Naomi uh, hears uh, through the grapevine that uh, the crops are now better back in Bethlehem, back in Israel. And so she decides, I'm going back to my home area. And though Ruth is a Moabite woman, she says, I'm going back with you, Naomi. And so when they return, they are penniless. And so Ruth goes out and, 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 and finds a field where she can glean the droppings of the harvest of the barley, uh, uh the, the barley crop. And, uh, and, and the grain is left by the harvesters behind. And this was one of the way that the society provided for those who were uh, very much in need of food. And it turns out that the field that she found was a, uh, owned by a, uh, a relative, a close relative of Elimelech, her father-in-law. And so this guy's name is Boaz. And Boaz takes a special interest in Ruth because um, we don't know why exactly at first, but it turns out that he probably knew that, that she was uh, a part of, part of his family. And now here's where it really gets interesting because you see, because of the, his relationship to Elimelech, uh, the Jewish law provided that Boaz is what's called a kinsman redeemer, or in this translation, it calls him a family redeemer. Now, the role of a kinsman redeemer is found in, in, in Jewish law in Leviticus chapter 25. And it, it turned out that if a Jewish man dies and does not leave a son behind to take care of his wife, then the brother or the next closest relative of the deceased man is commanded to take his widow as a wife to provide for her. Now, <laughs> Naomi evidently knew her Jewish law, or perhaps she was just a matchmaker or even just a schemer, maybe the combination of all three. And so we read in chapter three, verses three through four, uh, she, she says, she tells Ruth this, she says, now do as I tell you, Take a bath, put on perfume and dress in your nicest clothes. Then go to the threshing floor, but don't let Boaz see you until he has finished eating and drinking. Be sure to notice where he lies down and then go uncover his feet and lie down there and he will tell you what to do. So Ruth does this and attracts Boaz's attention that evening with through these rather unique actions. And, and by doing this, he is asking, she is asking Boaz to redeem her to, uh, and, and to actually become her husband. And Boaz graciously receives Ruth's uh, offer. He, and he would like to be her new husband, but to his understanding, he is not the nearest relative or the kinsman redeemer. And he wanted to do this whole legal thing right. So he promises that as soon as the morning comes, uh, he would look into the situation. So when Ruth returns, you might expect that Naomi is full of questions. We read in verses 17, uh, verse 17, it says, Ruth told Naomi everything Boaz had done for her. And she added, he even gave me six scoops of barley and said, don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Then Naomi said to her, just be patient, my daughter, until we hear what happens. The man won't rest until he has settled things today. So tomorrow we're going to finish this story. And there is some great stuff that actually connects us to Jesus in chapter 4. But let's just look at this chapter and see what we can see what God is doing here. 
first, first the observation I make is I think that, that God provides. Uh, sometimes even through matchmaking friends, God provides. And in this, in this case, uh, God is certainly providing for Ruth and it's going to be for Naomi too. The second thing we learn that Boaz is a faithful, God-loving man and so is Ruth. He's a faithful, she's a faithful, God-loving woman and God is honoring their, their faithfulness. And the third thing we find out is that Naomi gives us some sage advice. Um, in the midst of our prayers and our wishes, and in this case, Ruth was seemingly very anxious for this whole process, this whole redemption process to take place. Naomi tells Ruth that at the very end of, of the chapter, she says, just be patient, my daughter, until we see what happens. She believed and we believe that God is orchestrating uh, situations like this and in our life all the time without us even knowing sometimes. We believe that God answers prayers and he answers prayers with just the right answer in exactly the right timing. And so he calls us to leave the results to him. So whatever your prayers are today, I pray that you can listen to Naomi's uh, sage advice and, and just remember God is working and he is going to work out your situation with exactly the right answer in exactly the right timing. Have an amazing day. If these devotional videos are helpful to you, subscribe to our channel and click the notification button so you know when we post a new video. And of course, please share them with others.